So you have an old MacBook Pro and you want to make it faster? Now let me show you the opportunities you have and how to do it. So ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Here's my MacBook Pro mid-2010, so I've got this for a very cheap price, so um, very, very cheap. And I have to say it's pretty old, but still um, looks really good, and I definitely love the look of 13-inch MacBooks. But um, the old ones are kind of slow, and today I want to show you what you can do in order to upgrade them. First of all, you have to understand what components you've got inside. Let's get started with the processor, so the CPU. So this is how a notebook CPU looks like, and this is a different type of CPU, which is not inside of a MacBook. So this is a socket type CPU. That means we have your pins on this side, and basically you have a socket on the logic board, so the motherboard, where you just put the CPU in, and that means you can exchange them. But on MacBooks, it's soldered to the um, logic board. That means you can't upgrade that because you would have to desolder that and then it's also not compatible with the logic board. So in fact, you can't update the CPU on MacBooks, okay? The next thing is um, the graphics processing unit. So this one here, for instance, is a desktop card. Now the graphics card, um, yeah, in the notebook itself, it's also an onboard solution. That means the chip, so the graphics chip, is soldered onto the motherboard. That means you also can't exchange that. So it's like with the CPU. And that means um, there are solutions for that. So actually, there's an external Thunderbolt box. It's pretty expensive, around $600 if I'm right. And then you still need a GPU. You can connect it over Thunderbolt and you get extreme graphics um, power. So that means you can cut um, 4K videos or whatever you want to. You can play games. Depends on the GPU you put inside. But that's a great solution for some kind of desktop replacement. And I'm going to do that. Next thing is the RAM. So I've got here some Mac RAM and it's really important that you pick the correct RAM for your MacBook. So my MacBook is pretty old and it only supports DDR3 1066 megahertz. With other RAM, so DDR3 1600, it won't boot. So make sure you always get the correct specifications or the one from Team Mac because they're always providing the correct RAM for your MacBook. So this is what I've got. The next thing is upgrading the hard drive. So, well, um, you can upgrade it um, for a hard drive with a bigger capacity, but this is not going to bring you any boost. So it gets you um, basically more space. But actually, if you want to have more boost, you should get an SSD drive. And I've got myself here um, the Kingston SSD Now V300. And yeah, um, it's a pretty good one, actually. So yeah, it's not the best one on the market. So I would actually pick a Samsung 850 Evo. But well, um, it doesn't um, change anything because um, this is an old MacBook and it only has a SATA 2 interface. That means um, it's limited to 3 gigabit per second, okay? Now, um, the newer ones are limited to 6 and actually then you can get the full potential of SSDs. But if you have something with SATA 2, like the older 2010, I think also some of the 2011 models, then um, yeah, you can only get around, I don't know, 360 megabytes per second. So a fast SSD won't really change anything. Now that's regarding the components, for sure. Um, you can also, if you have a newer um, MacBook, you can put in an MSATA SSD. So I've got here, for instance, an um, SSD drive. So it's an MSATA one. It's the Samsung 840 Evo, 256 gigabytes. And yeah, you can exchange that in your MacBook too, but only if you have a newer one, which has an MSATA slot on the logic board. This one here, not. So this is so far about the components. CPU, graphics processing unit, RAM, and here we've got um, the hard drive. But well, um, also my MacBook runs a little bit hot and for sure there's dust inside, so I should definitely clean it. And I'm also going to replace the thermal grease. But this is usually not needed. I'm just going to do it because I have to take it apart anyway to show you everything and I have to clean it. And for that, I also need to clean isopropanol. So just some kind of alcohol. Anyway, this is how you could possibly upgrade a MacBook, but now let me show you how to do it. Now, luckily, MacBooks are actually easy to upgrade. With that, I mean you can easily access all the components. So you just need a Phillips head screwdriver and you just need to remove all the screws here all along on the bottom plate. So I'm not really sure about the newer models because um, this is actually my first MacBook and I just have here the older unibody uh, MacBook. So I'm pretty sure not so much has been changed also on the newer models, but um, for the MacBook 12, however it's called, so this is not something you actually um, yeah, um, should watch here because um, we're just talking about the older ones and how to update them um, yeah, actually how to make them faster. So just remove all the screws here on the bottom plate and then you will actually already see the inside of your MacBook. So there we go. And all I now have to do is just lift off here the case and yeah, take it off. Oh, there's one screw left. 
So ladies and gentlemen, here are the internals and um, yeah, just to keep this short, here we have the battery, here's the logic board, so the motherboard, and here's the RAM, and here's the hard drive, and here's the super drive. Okay, so um, basically um, what you can do, so you can replace the battery easily, I have to do that on the MacBook 2 because it's kind of old and the battery only lasts one hour. Then here we have the motherboard and I have some kind of corrosion on there so I have to clean it with the alcohol. Anyway, um, you can easily change the RAM, so the RAM is located here, we have two slots here on the 13 inch model we have here the fan a little bit of dust inside have to clean that we have here um the optic sorry the um yeah the hard drive 2.5 inch sata drive western digital black so if you want to stick with a hard drive the black edition of western digital is really kind of fast so have a look at them too if you want, don't want to get an ssd and here we have the optical drive. If you don't need an optical drive, there are adapters for this one here. That means you can actually just get this out and put in here a 2.5 inch hard drive adapter and you can have two hard drives or two SSDs or one SSD, one hard drive, whatever you want to. But I'm not going to do this. I will keep my super drive and just get in here my 480 gigabyte SSD. Now to save time, I will now quickly take everything apart and when we're going to change, so replace anything, I'll show you how to do that. So now we're going to replace some um, the hard drive and it's pretty easy once you have removed the battery there are just two screws here and yeah you unscrew them and then you can basically um, take out that plastic part here which is securing the hard drive okay so there we go the screw is still a little bit in there always use your plastic tools so you can't really break anything this is really easy so just get anywhere in there and squeeze out here that plastic bar and there we go, so make sure you don't lose the screws and then you should actually be able to get out here, yeah, the hard drive. It's still connected here to the SATA connector and here you have to be a little bit careful, it's connected to a flex cable on the bottom side and you don't want to kill that because this can be really expensive. So there we go, it's now safely removed but be careful not to damage here that black flex cable. What you can do now is just, yeah, replace that with an SSD drive and put it back together in the opposite way. But now I want to dig a little bit deeper and show you some other things here on the MacBook Pro. So the RAM is fairly easy to replace and doesn't even require the battery to be out of the of the um, case. But well, um, what you have to do is just, um, there are two of those plastic bars and you have to push them here to the outside and there we go, now you can take out the memory. So that's on the first memory bar as you can see and here's a second one right under the first one. Now replacing the RAM module is pretty easy. So you just grab your brand new RAM module and um, there you can see basically that um, yeah, the golden connector here is interrupted by some kind of slot and there's also a plastic nose here. So you see it's not in the middle. So there's only one way um, that you can fit in the RAM module. So you just slide it in here in the correct way. Start here with the bottom module. There we go, um, yeah press and push it in until you can't put in anymore but um, always not with force and then you just push it down until it snaps in. So really easy if you want to get it out here both plastic bars here to the outside and then you can slide it out. So replacing the RAM is really really super easy. So now basically um, yeah that's all you can replace. So the RAM then here you can replace the SSD, you can get a second one here, you can get the external graphics card, you can replace a battery which is not going to improve the performance but the battery life and now I want to show you um, basically how process and everything looks like. So I'll now remove the logic board and also the screen for a different video so I'll um, fix the hinges. But now um, let's speed all that up, I'll quickly um, do in a speed up here the logic board removal.
So well guys, you can see now here the logic board and we have here one, two, three, four Phillips screws securing the heat sink. And as you can already see, uh, the logic board is super small, just like the size of my hand and the heat sink is almost a choke because it's just a heat pipe. And this is mainly the heat sink with, um, yeah, you see it's super, super small. That means no overclocking on notebooks. You can overclock the GPU. So the Nvidia GPU it's possible, but it's definitely not recommended if you want to have um, a good life time as you can see it's super dirty here on the inside so this also um yeah is bad for heat dissipation so i'll definitely clean all that and i've seen already some kind of corrosion so i'm using my alcohol to clean also the backside with a toothbrush so be very careful with that and i will now just um, get off the heatsink clean everything and then i'll show you how to apply thermal compound now after removing the heatsink it's time to clean everything so to get here clean surfaces and for that i'm using isopropanol so it's some kind of alcohol you can get in the drugstore it has around 90 percent alcohol so yeah not really much water inside actually this one is even 99 percent i think so um you can get it for around i think this one was five euros it's definitely worth it and with that you can clean the electronics but make sure you dry it also afterwards and yeah don't heat it up too much um don't dry it with a heat gun or anything so just um let it dry it before you uh, reassemble everything so i will now do that remove all the the dust and clean the surface it. So guys the motherboard is now pretty clean we have removed most of the dust and now it's time to actually um, let's dry a bit and then um, just reassemble it. Now in order to do that we have to apply new thermal grease. So I'm using here Be Quiet DC1 that's probably the best you can buy right now. I'm definitely using that for actually all my um, yeah, PC builds or other components. So the DC1 is not the cheapest one but it's really worth it trust me guys. Now um, this one here does not um, conduct so that means um, if you actually just spread it over the surface so that means um, also here on, on the green surface it actually um, yeah it doesn't make a difference so it shouldn't harm your processor because this is non-conductive. All in all um, there are different techniques on how to apply thermal grease so some people they just place some um, yeah a little ball uh, I'm not really sure how I should say that here in the middle of the process and then they put the heatsink on. I'm personally just putting um, a small amount on the processor and I'm using my finger to um, yeah get an even um, kind of surface on the processor so you can check out different techniques i will leave your link down below in the description but i fix it does it the same way like me so they just use their finger and then they spread um, the thermal grease all over the processor so only on the mirroring surface there and just a very thin layer so this is just going to um, close all the microscopic pores and um, basically the air we have between um, the heatsink and the processor surface here so this is just going to um, make it a very even contact with the heatsink so I'm now going to apply some um, thermal grease so there we go oh oh holy crap that was even too much so we can even use it a little bit on the other processor so the GPU and there we go. So just use your finger and try to get here some kind of even layer on the mirroring surface. So this can be a little bit tricky if you do it for the first time. But well, um, don't be afraid. You can't really break anything. So just try to get um, a very clean layer and then you should be done. Um, don't apply too much because this would be a waste. So just a very thin layer is really more than you need. Well, now it's time to reapply the heatsink. Here you can see it. Don't apply any thermal um, compound here on the heatsink. This is not needed. So just on the on the processor here and on the GPU. And now you have to put in here, put on here the heatsink, and make sure you don't move it too much around. Otherwise, it will just spread um, the thermal compound all over the surface in a non-good way. And there we go. So now don't forget the springs. They are really important because, you know, um, with temperature, um, this is going to um, move up and down a little bit. And those springs are going to compensate all the movements. So there we go. Here's the next one. Now, when you tighten the screws, make sure you tighten all of them first gently. So yeah, um, make sure you 
tighten them equally and then start to tighten them a little bit harder. But do not over tighten them, otherwise you could damage the thread. And yeah, um, this is really a pain in the ass if you do that. So make sure you just do not over tighten the screws here. So guys, here's now the motherboard. The heatsink is mounted and it's almost dust free. That also helps a lot for the airflow. And yeah, um, as you can see, the heatsink is clean. We now have a new thermal compound with a pretty good heat conduction coefficient. And we now should get out the most to the best cooling performance of the MacBook Pro we can get. So now we just have to check out um, the fan and make sure it's clean. So also there's some dust inside. So before I will reassemble it, I'll definitely going to clean it. But now just the opposite way and let's reassemble everything. Alright guys, so the MacBook is back alive and yeah, some final words. So it's now running um, 8 gigabytes of 1066 MHz DDR3 memory. We also have now the SSD inside and I have to say it's really super fast. Also check out here, um, everything pops up really fast. It's super snappy. Now, um, yeah, it's not some super high-end um, laptop, but I have to say for working it's really okay. Anyway, I'm going to sell it. So... Um, it's actually already sold and I'm going to get myself the new MacBook 2015. I know the 2016 model might come in the next months, but I definitely need something for video editing and the MacBook is really great because it handles in Final Cut my 4K files from my camera really, really good and this definitely helps me to improve the overall video quality and everything and the workflow. All right, guys, so um, thanks for watching this here. So this is how to upgrade an old MacBook. Also something I have to say, be careful with the installation. If you reinstall OS X like I have done, um, it's also very picky. So here it did only install with the 4 gigabytes, which were pre-installed with 8 gigabytes. Um, the installation failed every single time. So MacBooks are very shitty in this way, like um, upgrading and then reinstalling. There can be a lot of troubles, uh, but yeah, um, it's definitely worth it to give your old MacBook a little bit of an extra speed if you don't want to sell it. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it was really helpful and there will be another one and a review of the new MacBook. So stay tuned and see you very soon in the next video. Bye bye guys.